It's Bengals week in the Steel City, and the stakes couldn't be higher. Welcome into Steelers Talk, Steelers fans. And today, we're going to be breaking down the Pittsburgh Steelers Week 16 matchup this week against those dreaded pussycats, those Cincinnati Bengals. I got my score prediction. I got keys to victory. I got team stats all coming your way here over the next 15 minutes or so. But before we get into today's preview, go ahead and click that subscribe button and join us for all of our live watch parties that we have during the 2023 season we got three more left Bengals Seahawks and then Ravens all right so this week the Bengals one we're going to be going live at around 3 30 p.m eastern standard time make sure you click that subscribe button to join the largest Steelers YouTube community right here on the platform and this week of course it is Bengals week the Bengals are traveling to Acrisure Stadium the Steelers ended up beating the Cincinnati Bengals back in week 12. Uh, but right now the Bengals, even with Jake Browning as their quarterback, have a better record than the Pittsburgh Steelers, who currently sit dead last in the AFC North. And listen, guys, it's pretty simple here. This, the odds or the, the stakes just couldn't be uh, higher here. The Steelers have to win this week. No question about it. In order to get into the playoffs, if they lose, their playoff chances drop below 1%. However, if they win you can get it up to 8%. So you can still stay alive. I mean, it's still under 10%. If you win, you pretty much have to win out in order to even have a shot to make the playoffs if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers at this point. There's a ton of good teams in the AFC. However, if you lose, your chances of making the playoffs pretty much die uh, there at Acrisure Stadium. 3% to less than 1% if you take the L against Jake Browning and the Cincinnati Bengals. So before we get into the team stats, injury report, all this different stuff coming up on today's show, let me know to kick us off here. Who do you guys got this week? Do you think the Pittsburgh Steelers come out with a big-time victory and save their season, type P-I-T? Or do you think the Cincinnati Bengals completely end us this year? Type C-I-N if you think the Bengals pull it out here. And this is going to be the pin comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pin question. So the big story for the Pittsburgh Steelers this week is that if Kenny Pickett is unable to go with that ankle injury, it will, in fact, be Mason Rudolph getting the start over Mitchell Trubisky. And honestly, you know, we covered this on yesterday's show. I think this is the right call. I do think Mason Rudolph is probably your best, worst option at this point. Mitchell Trubisky has not been working over the last couple of weeks for this offense. And, you know, is Rudolph going to come in here and completely light it up? Probably not, right? But is he? But does he give you a better chance to win this football game than Mitch Trubisky does? Potentially, and you got to try that out and give this team a spark. Other injuries to monitor this week for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Keep in mind that we're filming and putting this video out on Tuesdays. So if you're watching this later in the week, these might be updated. But as we sit right now, Kenny Pickett is currently questionable to play with that ankle injury. His rehab has been going very, very well. He's expected to not play, and he'd be ready to go for Week 17 against the Seahawks, but Mike Tomlin has not ruled him out just yet. Then Minka Fitzpatrick will be out with that knee injury that he suffered against the Indianapolis Colts. Cam Hayward is dealing with a is in concussion protocol. They are uh, optimistic that he'll be able to play. Elijah Riley uh, uh, was designated to come off IR. He started practicing here on Tuesday with that ankle injury. That'd be a big time get. Uh, uh, if he can come back. And then Trenton Thompson's dealing with a stinger as well, also questionable. So right now, at the safety position, the Steelers definitely have some problems here because the top four guys on the, on the safety depth chart are either hurt or suspended. Minka Fitzpatrick and Keanu Neal will for sure be out with knee and ribs injuries, respectively. DeMonte KZ just took that ridiculous suspension dealt by the NFL just yesterday. And then Trenton Thompson is questionable with a stinger. So if Trenton Thompson is unable to go. He's the only one that's even questionable on this list. The likely safety rotation for the Pittsburgh Steelers will be Patrick Peterson, a corner who actually finished the game at free safety when Minka got hurt against the Colts. Miles Killebrew, who's been terrible in coverage all season long. He's mostly just a special teamer. And then Eric Rowe, the practice squad safety, uh, could be coming in to Come in for relief for all these injured and suspended safeties that the Steelers have this week. But the Steelers aren't the only ones dealing with major injuries. The Bengals have a big one this week, and that is superstar wide receiver Jamar Chase, who is unlikely to play this Saturday. His, his official designation is day-to-day, -day, but he is not expected to play Saturday afternoon, which would definitely uh, put a little bit... 
uh, uh, rain a little bit on the, on the Bengals parade here offensively, and it's going to put a big emphasis on T. Higgins as the number one receiver on Saturday afternoon. Now, still to come here on Steelers Talk, uh, we got the 2023 team stat comparisons here between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cincinnati Bengals. Also, I got my keys to victory versus uh, the Bengals this week, and then also, of course, as I do every single week, I got my official Week 16 score prediction. So don't go anywhere, but first, I want to tell you about today's sponsor at Game Time. And Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater in your area. It's the only ticketing app that you need on your phone. I used to be somebody, guys, that would browse a bunch of different ticketing apps, and I'd do all these different things. You know, I'd compare prices. With Game Time, you don't have to do that. They have the lowest price guarantee. They got an awesome app that you can use, super easy to use. You get views of your seats before you buy the tickets. My family is actually coming here to Dallas, Texas, and we got tickets for uh, the Dallas Mavericks, Mavericks game on Wednesday with game time. And we got a fantastic deal. So if you even want to go to this week's game, uh, the Steelers versus the Bengals at Acrisure Stadium, it's your last chance to do so at Acrisure here for the 2023 season. You can get them on game time now. Absolutely fantastic tickets at great prices. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. You can buy your tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you're set. Another great feature that they have. Tickets are also sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through your pesky email to get your tickets. Snag the tickets now without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Steelers Chat. That's one word, all caps. Promo code Steelers Chat for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Steelers Chat. One word, all caps, for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So now let's break down what, we're, what we can expect to see from the Cincinnati Bengals this week. Of course, their, uh, their head coach is Zach Taylor. They run a hybrid third-generation West Coast system. So you'll see some of the Shanahan stuff here, the McVay stuff. But you're also going to see a lot of stuff that you see in Kansas City. They like to be in shotgun a lot. Uh, Zach Taylor kind of runs his very own brand of offense, even though he's, he's regularly compared to Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan. And then defensively, Lou Anarumo, one of the more respected defensive coordinators, coordinators in the league runs a multiple style system. They run a bunch of different stuff here, uh, which is one of the reasons why I have a, a high level of respect for Anna Rumo as a defensive mind and defensive play caller. Now with Jake Browning, so they've, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals have had four games and their only loss with Jake Browning as their starter so far was against the Pittsburgh Steelers, but they've won uh, three straight games right now, two of them in overtime. They went to Jacksonville and beat them there. That game that Trevor Lawrence got hurt, they ended up beating them 34-31. Then they absolutely crushed that Colts team that just beat the Steelers uh, last week, 34-14. to That's definitely not a great sign. And then just last week, they beat another uh, NFL playoff ca uh, contender here in the Minnesota Vikings at home, 27 24. But, you know, if there's a silver lining to all this is that the Steelers already beat the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, granted, Kenny Pickett was the quarterback. Granted, the Steelers were healthier at that point in the year, but the Steelers did win when they were at Paycor Stadium by a final score of 16 to 10. Now let's look at the team trends here, starting with the Cincinnati Bengals offense. And as you can see here, the two things that they do at a top 10 level is that they're a top 10 red zone offense, and then they don't give the football away. They're tied for first in the league right now with the least giveaways in the National Football League. But everything else, man, it's just okay. It's about league average to even slightly below average. Right now, points per game sitting at 21.9. And when we look at how that compares with the Steelers' defense here and we get ready for this matchup, uh, you can probably expect the Bengals to get somewhere around 20, 21 points here if you believe the trends. Also, you look at the Steelers' defense. They've done a good job turning the ball over. It's going to be interesting to see how they play against this Bengals' offense that doesn't really turn the ball over all that much. Uh, and then you look at the Bengals' defensive stats here, and it's kind of looking like exactly the same, only worse uh, in like yards per game, yards per play. This Bengals' defense gives up a ton of yards. This Steelers' offense 
what, uh, actually put up over 400 yards of offense last time they played the Bengals, but the two things they do well, just like on offense, is that they defend the red zone extremely well and they turn teams over, currently ranking seventh in takeaways. And the way that they match up against the Steelers offense right now, I mean, obviously Steelers offense, take these numbers with a grain of salt. Matt Canada's no longer here. They've been shifting around quarterbacks and the same thing with the Bengals as well. But, you know, you look at the trends, you could probably expect about 17 or so points from the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, overall. It's definitely going to be interesting to see uh, who wins the turnover battle in this year, be, uh, th in this one, because both offenses protect the football and both defenses take the football away. I think that turnover battle and whoever wins that is going to be, uh, is going to have a big time advantage heading into this one. So the trends would predict that the Bengals will win this one on the road by a final score of 21 to 17. I'm going to let you guys know my official score prediction here in just a second, as well as my keys to victory. I got five of them this week. But before I get into that, do me a favor real quick here. Just take one second to click that thumbs up icon and like today's video. If you want the Pittsburgh Steelers to win and for Mason Rudolph to save Christmas here in the Steel City. All right, number one key to victory against the Bengals this week is you have to get after the quarterback, especially with all the injuries that the Steelers are dealing with in the inside linebacker room and in the safety room, all right? So right now the Steelers defensive line is actually pretty healthy, and they got after Jake Browning in Week 12. They had four sacks against the Bengals back there in Week 12, and I think you got to continue to put pressure on Jake Browning if you're going to have success this week, especially with all the injuries, like I said. So you look at his numbers, Jake Browning's uh, back in Week 12, 19 to 26, but, you know, they were... They were pretty careful with Jake Browning in that game. Lots of short passing. They've been airing it out a little bit more as of late. Just 227 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. So definitely that's been his worst performance as a starter so far. But overall, his numbers have actually been really, really nice, man. Over 73% completion percentage, averaging almost 300 yards passing in his four starts. That is absolutely fantastic, and he's thrown seven touchdowns to three interceptions here in 2023. Right now, he's the 14th highest graded quarterback in the National Football League, so in order for this Steelers uh, defense, especially with how banged up they are, uh, the one area that the Steelers are actually healthy is the defensive line with T.J. Watt, Alex Highsmith, Cam Hayward. All these guys are going, going to be healthy and ready to go. They need to get after Jake Browning's ass, and they need to put him on his butt continuously here, put the pressure on him, force mistakes out of the quarterback here. He's a backup for a reason. If you put pressure on him, I think the Steelers' defense could have success. If you don't, I think the Bengals probably have their way. All right, now let me know down there in the comments section, will the Steelers have over or under two and a half sacks this week against the Cincinnati Bengals? Type O if you think they get over that and get at least three, or if you think they get two or less, type U for under down there in the comments section. The other a big key to victory for me for the Steelers defensively is you got to shut down T. Higgins, and that's really going to be something that the Steelers need to do because T. Higgins, he's a really good receiver, man. He had a really great game last week against the Minnesota Vikings. He's starting to get hot at just the right time, and he's going to be their number one receiver most likely with uh, Jamar Chase out of the lineup with that shoulder injury. So what this does here uh, and how the, why this helps the Steelers is because the Steelers have a lockdown number one corner right now in Joey Porter Jr. He's had a fantastic season to this point. And, you know, if you had to go up against Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, that means, you know, J Joey Porter Jr. can't guard both of them. But now that only one of them is going to be on the field, that means JPJ can go one-on-one -on -one with T. Higgins for the entire game. And as JPJ has done all season, he has erased number one receivers for the most part this season. If you take away T. Higgins, it's going to be tough for Jake Browning uh, to move the ball effectively through the air. Now, let's move over to the offense here. And we've had this as a key to victory uh, for a while now because it really is the bread and butter for the Steelers offensively. The way they like to win is they like to dominate on defense, run the football, and then protect the football in the passing game. Mitch Trubisky has not done that over the last couple of weeks, which is one of the reasons why Mason Rudolph is getting the start. But it's not like Mason Rudolph has been known for protecting the football throughout his career. His, his career uh, interception percentage is 2.8, and if he had that number this year, that would rank 32nd in the National Football League among quarterbacks with at least 75 pass attempts, which is not good at all, all right? So that's lower than Mitch Trubisky, I guess, but you got to protect the football if you're Mason Rudolph, if you want a chance to win this one. And how you do that, how you protect Mason from making mistakes is that you get the ball out of his hands quickly. If you're throwing the ball deep, 
do a five-step drop and then chuck it deep on that fifth step, right? Don't make him uh, go seven-step drop with a couple hitches, all these different things. Don't do that, okay? Trey Hendrickson's going to hit him, is going to eat him alive uh, with the pass rush this week. You got to get the ball out of his hands quickly. You got to protect him in that way. And then also, you got to get the run going, which is another key to victory that we have this week because last time that these two teams matched up, the Steelers' run game was excellent and was a big reason why they were able to get that over 400-yard uh, performance. Najee, Najee Harris had his best uh, performance of the season with 99 yards and a touchdown. And then Jalen Warren also had 49 yards. Jalen's been fantastic all season long. I would actually like him to get more snaps and more touches than Najee this week because plain and simply, he's been a better performer. Now, number five, my final key to victory is that you have to make the big play late. And early in the season, the Pittsburgh Steelers were able to do this. As of late, especially against you know teams like the, uh, the New England Patriots, for example, they didn't do that, all right? So you need to be able, if it's close, and I do expect it to be close, right, guys? There's two backup quarterbacks playing in this game. It's probably going to be pretty cold. It's going to be extremely physical. I think that it's going to be relatively close when we get into the fourth quarter. So uh, I think the team that's going to win this game is going to be the team that gets a big turnover or gets a last second touchdown drive, whatever the case may be. So my official week 16 score prediction this week is I actually think the Steelers will pull it off. I do think Mason Rudolph will save Christmas here in Pittsburgh. And you know what? I actually think uh, that they're going to be down six. All right, I think they're going to be down six here. I think it's going to be 23-17. Mason Rudolph has the ball with a chance to take the lead in the fourth quarter. And I think he gets a game-winning touchdown there at Accrashire Stadium uh, to finish uh, the season there at Accrashire. I I think it's just going to be awesome. I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. You can't write a better script than this, people. you got a quarterback named Rudolph coming to save the season two days before Christmas. I just think it's written in the stars here. Mason Rudolph will win this week for the Pittsburgh Steelers and save our season at at least for now. But let me know what you guys think down there in the comment section. Am I crazy for thinking the Steelers could win after this three-game skid? Let me know. Give me your Steelers versus Bengals score prediction down there in the comment section. I want to hear from you. Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments. All right, that'll be it for me today, guys. Really do appreciate all of your support. Make sure you click that subscribe button right now. Again, we're going to be having our watch party on Saturday. We've got a bunch of videos throughout this week. We've got a video coming out every single day. So get yourselves ready for this, tw- for this December 23rd matchup by clicking that subscribe button right now.